Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technology Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on impedance matching. For this video, the objective is to understand how can we actually apply this absorption method on impedance matching. In fact, for impedance matching, there are actually two methods. One will be the absorption method. Another one will be the resonant method, which will be covered on the part five series discussion. So this video, okay, the focus is how can we actually implement this absorption method in order to design an impedance matching network. This will be the part four series discussion. Okay, the rest of the video on impedance matching, I have put the video link or the playlist under the description. So please take a look on those in order to fully understand on the topics of impedance matching. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, please also give me some form of comment so that the quality of this channel can be improved. Once again, sincere thanks for strong support. Let's start by discussing okay, how can we actually implement impedance matching. As I told you early on, there are actually two methods that we can actually implement impedance matching. One will be absorption, another one will be resonant method. Okay, in the reality, okay, most of the impedance are complex. Okay, for example, we have this transistor, the input and output impedance, they are actually complex. Okay, as for transmission line, technically we can assume it to be just purely 50 ohm. However, in the reality world, okay, we cannot neglect away the complex impedance. Hence, with this, we still need to consider the transmission line having a complex impedance. Same as antenna. And hence, in order to handle this complex impedance, there are two basic approach for impedance matching. One will be absorption, which is the focus of this video. Another one, resonant method, which I will cover on a part five series discussion on impedance matching. Let's take a close look. What is absorption method? Okay, this method is to absorb any stray reactants. Okay, so stray reactants into the impedance matching network itself. Okay, so this can be done through careful placement of each matching element, such that element, for example, okay, we have we put capacitor, they are placed in parallel with the stray capacitor, so can, we can remove away the stray capacitor effect. We can also put inductor in series with any stray inductance so that the stray inductance effect can be cancelled off. So this is the meaning of absorption method. So over here, it further explained here, the stray component value are then extract from the calculate element value, leaving new element here, which are smaller than the calculate element value. However, obviously, if the stray element value are greater than the calculate value, Absorption method cannot take place. And once this absorption method cannot take place, you can consider to use this resonant method to design the impedance matching. Let's go a little bit deep to understand this method, which is the absorption method. Okay, so instead, by words, okay, let's work out an example. Okay, use the absorption approach to match the source. Okay, so this is the source and load. This is the load as shown in the figure below at 200 megahertz. And if you still remember, the key objective to do this impedance matching is when I actually look into this port, okay, this must be complex conjugate with the source. So when I actually look inside here, okay, so this input impedance should be 100 minus J150, which means that if I put my matching network over here, then when I actually look into this angle here, my complex impedance supposed to be 100 minus J150. Okay, so over here you can see that they are basically complex conjugate versus the source over here. So this is the objective why we need to do impedance matching. 
with the addition of this, this make this 100 minus J150 as the Z in possible. So let's take a look. How can we actually design this impedance matching? Okay, so this is the question that given to me. So basically, as I told you that when I look over here, okay, I must have this complex impedance of 100 minus J150. Okay, so when we actually want to use this absorption method, over here, you can see that we need to implement low pass topology. Okay, over here, you can imagine that we need to put a capacitor so that they can be absorbed. Over here, I must put an inductor again so that they can be absorbed. Okay, as you can see over here. So basically, this is the matching network, okay, which is from this box here. This is the matching network. So when I actually design my matching network in this configuration, okay, this L will be absorbed. Can you see over here? So this C also will be able to absorb. So this is what we call a absorption method. Okay, so this is what I have visualized here. So basically, in short, okay, so when they absorbed, okay, I have a overall LT and CT. So this is what I need to design, okay, in order to absorb away this L. So basically, I need to implement my matching network in this configuration. So after that, I will return my L value and also my C value here. And finally, this will be my matching network. Let's take a close look. How can I actually do the calculation on this part here? Okay, as I told you earlier on, so this is my objective. This is basically to do an impeder matching okay, between the source and load. Okay, so the step one okay, is what we have discussed early on. So this is a formula. Okay, so parallel Q and the series Q is implemented by this formula. Remember, okay, the parallel okay, is always a bigger resistor value as compared to the series. So over here, you can see that parallel okay, will be 1000. So therefore, this is 1000. Series will be 100. So it's 100. So from here, I calculate my Q value as 3. Steps number 2. Okay, I want to focus on my series portion here first. So this is a series portion. If you still remember, for series will be QS equals to reactance in series over the resistor in series. Okay, over here, okay, I have the element. I need to find my XL. Okay, so therefore, my Q multiplied by RS. So the Q which I have found early on, which is 3 over here. So therefore, I substitute my 3 and my series resistor will be 100. So over here, I can calculate that my XL will be 300 ohm. Okay, next, I will be ready to calculate my inductor value. Okay, remember, for inductors, okay, the reactance is equal to WL, if you still remember. So I rearrange the formula in order to calculate my inductor value. So I compute that, that my inductor value is supposed to be 239 nano -handry. So this is the total inductor value. 239 nano Henry. So next, I will be focusing on the parallel resonator. Okay, if you still remember, under the parallel resonator, okay, it's actually governed by this equation. So this is actually a parallel resonator, the Q. Over here again, the objective is to find my C value. So I need to find my reactance of C. Okay, so I rearrange the formula. Okay, so this parallel okay, will be 1000. Okay, so this will be 1000 okay, over QP. QP is actually equal to 3. So from here, I can calculate that my XC is 333 ohm. So with this, I actually can calculate my capacitor. If you still remember, XC, okay, reactance of capacitor, is equal to 1 over WC. So I re so called re rearrange the formulas. I can actually calculate my capacitor to be 2.4 picofarad. So what I have done is basically I have calculated my L in total, which is 239 nano Henry. I have also calculated my capacitor to be 2.4 picofarad. So I'm ready okay, to return back the value. Okay, remember this is the value. Okay, early on, okay, maybe I should explain this part here. Early on, I have mentioned that this part is actually equals to plus J150, if you still remember. If you take a look on the equation here, it's actually plus J150. 
Okay, so I need to calculate what will be my inductor value for this case here. So I can actually calculate what is my inductor value. Again, will be governed by this equation. Okay, I know that this XL, okay, reactance of capacity uh, inductor will be 150. Okay, I can actually calculate what will be my L value over here, which is 119 nano Henry. Okay, remember, earlier on, I have calculated the L value, which is the total L value, which is 239. So I need to split the 239 nano Henry into 119. Another one will be the L value that I need to design for my matching network. Okay, if you still understand what I want to say. Early on, okay, as I told you that I have calculated the total L value over here, okay, uh, which is calculated here, which is 239 nano Henry. So now I know that this total is 239 nano Henry. I need to return back the 119 nano Henry. So from here, I can calculate my L value as using 239 minus 119, which is equal to 120 nano Henry. So my impedance matching network, the L must be 120 nano Henry. Okay, so next, let's take a look on the capacitor. Again, okay, I need to return back the value. Early on, I have calculated okay, the capacitor having the value of 2.4 picofarad. Since they are in parallel, so in order to return back, what I need to do is basically, I just need to minus away the 1 pico. Okay, at the load side, the capacitor is having 1 picofarad. So I need to return back the, so-called return back the capacitor. So therefore, this capacitor here must have the value of 1.4 picofarad. In short, okay, if these two capacitor having 1.4 and 1, when I actually combine them in parallel, they are actually equal to 2.4 picofarad. If you still remember, when parallel is actually in, uh, my, when capacitor is actually in parallel, they actually can be combined. So basically, when you actually have this as 1.4 and this having 1, so when they are put in parallel, I can just simply add their capacitor value which is 2.4 picofarad. Okay, so this is how we can implement a impedance matching using this absorption method. So I just want to put everything in close contact here in order to let everybody understand. So basically now the matching network, I need to put with a 120 nano Henry, okay, because it will have a load effect, okay, the L value, which is supposed to be 119 nano Henry. So basically, when these two things combine together, okay, they actually become a matching network, if you still remember. However, because at the source, I have this inductor, so hence, I need to do this consideration first. As for the load, it's the same thing, okay, because the load with a capacitor effect, so when I actually design my impedance matching, I need to so-called absorb the capacitor here. So hence, this is the matching network solution with the inductor having 120 nano Henry and the capacitor having 1.4 picofarad, I will be able to do the imp impedance matching network as shown over here. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. See you guys soon.